What's up guys? Are you just kicking off your startup and looking to take a co-founder onto your company? If so, you want to take that pretty seriously. So it would probably be handy if you know some questions that you should ask when recruiting a co-founder. If so, this video is for you. Stick with me guys right now. Bye. Ask Alex. Ask Alex. Because you don't know what you don't know. And if you don't know, now you know. Yeah. Okay, so the foundation of a startup is critical. The founders are quite figuratively the foundation upon which a company is built over a period of years. Jumping head first into a co-founder relationship without ever making sure everyone is on the same page is frankly insanity. So question is if you should even go to that founder dating event. Startups suck sometimes and it's gonna bring out the worst in one another. So if you don't know one another, Already, this is akin to getting a mail order bride crossed with a box of chocolates. You literally have no idea what you're going to get, but it's really hard to dispose of them in a dumpster. Okay, that just got a little bit dark, didn't it? So always question, uh, how well do you know each other? How well do you really know one another? Have you ever gone through a stressful situation together? And did one take his shirt off and run down the street screaming hallelujah and waving his shirt around or something? Yeah, something weird. I promise I've never done that myself. Um, just because your co-founder is a longtime friend or family member doesn't mean they have the same goals and opinions on what normal is. You know, you'll make reasonable assumptions and realize your version of normal uh, sort of took for granted a bunch of assumptions and aren't even their idea of normal. What? I can't use the company card to go to Vegas? No shit, this is actually real. True story. Regardless of the relationship, you want to get clear on these following questions more or less. So I polled my friends on Facebook who are all startup and uh, venture capital inv investors, and I got them to add in key questions that they would ask a co-founder as well. So we're going to start out with ability. Now, respect. What are your key achievements? Do you think your co-founder is better than you? You want to believe they're awesome because A people hire A people. B hire people, hire C people, and then D people, and then you get this death dumb explosion or bozo explosion as Steve Jobs called it. Um, so capabilities. What are you awesome at? You don't want to have two co-founders who are basically CEOs. I, you know, they can just do marketing, but neither of you can do code or anything else that's sort of actually useful, right? So Ronan Leonard, who um, runs Irish Tech News, he said, well, what I would do is ask who's was and who's jobs. That way you know who's doing what. So are they actually entrepreneurs? At what age did you do your first entrepreneurial activity? So are you both actually founders or actually entrepreneurial? I mean, have you done stuff before? Startup is still perceived as being kind of cool. So most people are not actually really founders. They're just more like banking consultants who are like, hey, let's kind of get a VC funded holiday, play with startup and then bugger off back to McKinsey after a while, right? Uh, most people are at best, frankly, early staff. And there's a big difference between an early staff member and being the founder of a company. Suckiness. What are your absolute weaknesses or things that you hate to do? It's best to be able to complement each other. You want to hire a founder for the strength, not a lack of weaknesses. So understand that everyone is going to have some things that they don't like to do. And let's say, okay, example, stereotypes. You got a lead engineer like the CTO co-founder. You know, he may not like talking to people, right? Whereas you as say the CEO have to let that shit up, in which case you compliment each other. And also he won't resent you when you're going out doing the partnerships and investors and things that some people perceive as being cool. All right, um, who have we got here? So Christine Liu, who's a co-founder of Shoppertize, she said, I was debating with myself whether it'd be one, are you willing to leave your current comfort zone or set up and run a company from scratch? 
Two, have you started a company or worked in a startup before? And three, what roles would you be playing in the company? What do you like or dislike to do? It's definitely two, she says. I guess that defines the attitude and tells you a lot about the ability to find solutions to every problem. Now, um, CK Yap, who is also a co-founder at Shopitize, um, ironically, uh, we've got two co-founders sharing their views here. Um, he says, determination. What was the toughest time in your life and how did you get through it? Startup is going to be, uh, it's going to hit hell a lot of obstacles. I would definitely want to work for someone who don't get demoralized easily. A co-founder has to share and believe in the same vision enough to be able to risk everything for the sake of achieving success. Your co-founder must realize this job is more than a paycheck in both the risk and the rewards that are available. I will make sure this quality is fully tested before bringing the co-founder in. All right, guys, next section is attitude. So first one, work ethic. Do you work 100 hour weeks or 40 hour weeks? This will drive you insane if the other person is coasting doing 40 hour weeks and you're putting in, you know, 80 to 100, depending on how bonkers you are. Like, by the way, I used to work 100 plus hour weeks for years. Trust me, it's not a great idea. You can do it for so long, but your body um, is writing checks that whatever the top gun quote is, you know, it's basically catches up with you, right? Uh, next one, trust. Do you actually trust me or do you actually trust them? It's maybe a question you probably want to think for yourself. Would you tell them about how you cheated your way through your MBA and be certain that they would never tell anyone? You need to know that they have your back. Are they your ride or die? I don't know, like the Crips and the Bloods thing, but like fingers, yeah. Um, Shady, have you ever been bankrupt? and can't be a director of a company again. Have you ever been convicted of a criminal offense? I know a startup where the VCs did real DD and found out the CTO was convicted of credit card fraud when they were 16. They actually kind of let it fly, but some people had an issue with it, but this stuff is real. Okay, uh, Shira Abel, who's a buddy of mine in America, who's a CEO of Hunter and Bard, she says, how do you handle conflict? How well do you take constructive criticism? What are you like when you haven't eaten or slept? Why, uh, what do you want to own? Why do you not care so much about? She says this helps divide up priorities and responsibilities. Now, next point, conflicts. Are you on any boards that would create a conflict of interest? Do you have any non-competes? Basically, you don't want to create problems that you don't need by starting to work with someone who can't do something that they shouldn't be doing, right? Honesty, what would you do in the prisoner's dilemma? Do you feel deep down that they wouldn't try and screw you given the first opportunity? Think Mark and Eduardo from Facebook. Also, do they steal? I've seen co-founders do all sorts of shady shit to steal money from investors and cover it up. And I don't mean just like once, I mean several times. Next, handling stress. Have you failed at something before and how did you deal with it? You don't want to deal with someone that's going to just break down and cry like a little baby, all right? No one likes to see fat dudes cry. <laughs> okay, location. Will you move to the Bay Area if you need to? Do you have to be based in London for some reason? I mean, seriously, I have no idea why people do startups in the Bay Area. It is so retardedly expensive, it's not even funny. That basically goes for every main city. So if you can operate somewhere else, do that. Okay, I'm going off track now. So Jimmy Hamlin, friend of mine in London, who's the CEO of Mobile Healthcare Network, says, tell me your favorite story or tale. Uh, Leonid uh, Morovsky, who's co-founder at Riga, says, what is your favorite hobby? Okay, sure. Aspirations now. Okay, so what is the exit goal? So where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? Are you swinging for the fence with, you know, high likelihood of failure or are you sort of more modest in what your goals are? Exit. Are you setting up to sell or is this a lifestyle business to live off long term? 
Now, both are fine, but you need to make sure that you're really aligned on this topic because it's kind of a big one. Next, sell out price. If someone made an offer in a year, what would you sell for? Is there a price you're both okay to sell at? Say 1 million in the first year, 5 million in year two, or maybe to get to 50 million, you're out of there one way or the other. Who cares? 50 million is a life-changing amount for um, you guys. Not so much for investors, but for founders, hey, it's pretty good. Now next, press. If not the CEO, how motivated are you by celebrity? Are you okay that as a CEO, I will do the interviews? I can tell you from personal experience, people can get pretty weird and bitter about random ass things, especially around investors, being featured in the press, doing partnerships, basically everything where they think you're out like with bottles and models, having fancy lunches and all that kind of stuff. Like some people get pretty weird about it. So it's just good to clear up and make clear, clear that, you know, the CEO is doing all the pressy stuff that everyone knows it's to build the company and not just for their own personal ego. Hence the question about how egotistical people are that we talked about earlier on. Um, so <clears throat> Juan Matigue, who's the founder of um, Educatomia, <laughs> Educatomia uh, he says, what's your number? At what number do we sell? Christian Menon, who's co-founder of Fabelio in Indonesia, says, how big is big enough? Aligning ambitions is key from day one so that the effort and energy is the same between the whole company especially co-founders. So next section now is commitment, pay. Can you afford low pay or do you expect a six-figure salary at the moment that you can? Money should be spent on growing the startup, not having a comfortable life. So if people uh, want to live a big lifestyle, if they've got families and kids and stuff, sorry, but like startups not really for you to be honest, unless you've got a lot of money saved up. Um, so have that kind of conversation to make sure you, you're kind of pretty clear about who is getting what, how much money, will there be an equity split change or something. I've seen situations where uh, one of the co-founders uh, is single, the other one's like married with kids, and the guy who's single basically let the dude who had the kids kind of have like a pretty decent salary to live on because he knew that he needed it. So that's just a combination they made. I don't know if they split equity or something on that. Is this something that they did? All right, piggy banks. How much money have you saved? How many months can you go without cash in the bank? Now, basically follows on the point before, but it's really important. Do you want uh, to start up with someone who needs to pay rent next month and has no savings? Because you can guess what's gonna happen at the end of the month. So Henrik Surinen, who's co-founder of Nonstop Games, he actually just uh, raised a fund for uh, to invest in gaming, said, what would you do if we had to cut salaries for zero to six months in the co-founding team? Full-time. Are we both going full-time on this or are we going to keep the day jobs till you reach a certain point? Sure, there have been startups like uh, She's a Prey in Australia was an example where one founder did uh, the job thing and paid for all the other founders to execute full time. I think they had t t two other founders that they were paying for, maybe three. Um, can't remember. Anyway, sometimes you'll have a founder who makes a lot of money. He gets the same stake. Everyone knows that he's basically going to cover the bills for everyone else. And so they're all kind of cool in the gang with that. And then I think the guy quit his job once they raised money or they got up to a certain stage, I can't remember. Anyway, family. What happens when someone gets married and does the good thing? So what commitment is still expected? Don't laugh. You know, 10 years of building a startup is a long time. And if you're in your 30s, like me, um, you know, marriage happens typically. Oh, we're just gonna be alone forever. Anyway. Uh, where are we? Commitment, duration. Are you in for three years or 10 years plus? Startup is like getting married to someone. Um, so if they kind of only want to date, that's kind of something you want to get pretty clear on, right? Test periods. How long do you think it will take to figure out if this startup has legs? So basically, are they just going to give it a go for like three months and then see how it goes? or are they gonna do whatever it takes to make sure that this bad boy flies, All right? Now, are you a missionary or a mercenary? And I don't mean in the, I'll oh, shut up. 
What gets you out of bed in the morning? Are you doing this out of passion or out of avarice? It's fine to want to just build a better mouse trap, but if one is all, you know, chains the world hippy dippy and the other one wants to make bank, you're going to piss off each other eventually. So Elvin Zhang, who's an investment manager at Vertex Ventures in Singapore, uh, he says, if you had all of the money in the world, would you still be doing this and why? Um, next, hiring and firing. Would you fire a friend as fast as you would hire them? You need to be logical and unemotional in startup. If you are driven, then you'll be going to be unbiased by emotions. So it's not terrible to be slightly sociopathic here. At least I think so. <laughs> Primary focus or side hustle. Are you doing this 100% full time with no distraction? You will lose your mind if they start losing focus and doing side hustles for fun. No, thank you. Other shizzle. What, if anything, can we do on the side? Can we be mentors at accelerators? Can we do advisor roles at other startups? Um, you basically need to decide what's okay to do at your startup or for people to sort of, you know, kind of play around with. Um, you just don't want to get in a situation where people are annoyed that they're like messing around with some accelerator and like, you know, you're at the office doing the real work. Because frankly, you're running a startup, right? So um, Gerald Ming at Growth X says, what motivates you to start a business? I find this a very powerful question to ask and allows us to identify what motivates them. Okay, next section, decision making. CEO, who is the CEO? As the Highlander said, there can be only one. And you gotta make it clear about who has the final call and be totally cool with that. I always ask this question to founders and expect a quick, decisive answer. By the way, I've actually written a blog about this last week, which I'm gonna put in the notes below for you that you can have a read. Um, so I always ask this question to founders and expect a quick, decisive answer. And when people go, uh, and start looking at one another, like it actually just really cracks me up. Uh, and I ask this question kind of be a bit of a dick because it just amuses me. Um, if they don't have anything to answer but like that guy, then there's a problem here, okay? Everyone needs to know who's a CEO and agree on who that person is. Um, decisions, how will decisions get made? Is it a dictator dictatorship or a collaborationship? I just made up a word there. Um, where do you trust one another to just do things and when do you have to talk things out? As one well-known CEO in the Nordic said to me, this is not a democracy, it's a dictatorship. I did a bit of a weird German accent there. I just, I don't know, let's, let's just go. So when shit happens, what do we do when one of us needs to get fired? Now, I've fired people before, it happens, it's real, it's not fun. What uh, do you leave with if you get fired, for example? So this question is sort of similar to the question about vesting, but we'll address it again. Actually, equities in the next section, so we'll do that in a second. Um, but, you know, shit happens. So if one of the founders is going to leave, do they get equity? Where does the vesting work? It's something you basically need to agree on. Holly Harrington, co-founder at Every Says, I'd ask them, what flags do you see about me? Test their observation skills and their intuition. And uh, also shows whether or not they dare to raise concerns in tough situations rather than spare my feelings. Plus, I may learn something new that others perceive about me. And even if I have heard the comments before, it gives us an opportunity to get those perceived weaknesses out and open in the front so we won't need to fear this kind of dialogue in the future. Holly's a badass. Okay, guys, a couple more sections. We're going into equity now. Splits. What is the equity split and it is it even? Now, I typically recommend 50-50 or 33-33-33, however you want to do it. Watch out if someone thinks that they should have 80% or they basically have no self-confidence and ask for 10%. Investment. If we put in cash, how is it dealt with? Debt repayal from investment, convertible notes, uh, sunk cost as an equity investment. Are you putting in the same amount of money, basically? Right? How are you doing all this? Now, vesting. 
Are we both committing to founder reverse vesting so that we're both committed and even after a one year cliff? So will you legally be able to back up that commitment around that so that if someone does leave, you'll be able to claw back that equity? So Marcus Ellison, San Fran, co-founder and CEO at VentureMark, he said, I asked potential co-founders, what do you want to do in life? I asked this because I want to know what ties their purpose to the startup. Um, why doing this matters to their identity. If their purpose cannot be fulfilled by the startup, then I know they are not committed. Execution time. So the short term, who is going to be accountable for what is the first six months before you have staff, etc. There's going to be so much to do and people will need to deliver. Funding. Is this a VC funded approach or a bootstrap one? You don't want to find out your co-founder doesn't want to raise money or that they do if you don't. Pivoting. If things aren't working, are we both okay to keep testing new things? You both better be. International point of view. Do you have the same views on expansion plans? In some regions, you have to be regional at least. Are you on the same page and what we need to manage this? What happens if you need to move the HQ? It's something you want to talk about, right? I personally can go anywhere in the world that I want to, but that's just me. Most people aren't like that. Prioritization. What are the three things you can be working on right now? And what are you working on right now? How are you making it happen? You need to know that you're not going to be messing about chasing wrong goals at the wrong time. Will your co-founder make logical, prioritized plans and execute on them? Wilson Capital, a founder of e &I, says, can you explain our business to your daughter? Uh, Ying Wang, who's co-founder of Venue Mob out of Melbourne, says, do you have a wife or kids? Now, culture, last section before we got a big ass comment. Culture, what is your perspective on a great culture? Culture matters and it sets the top and the rots from, um, culture matters and it's set from the top and it rots from the top like a fish. Do you have similar views about how to treat and communicate with staff? Staff trust. Do you have a view on trust and openness? What kind of person will succeed here? Do you want to hire amazing people and let them fly? Or are you B player worried they suck and will lose control? Aesop, what are your views around giving staff proper equity to incentivize them to kick ass? You don't want to be super cheap with equity. So what are you okay giving staff? What about the first five? Tech versus business. Do you val value business or tech more? Power, for example, was a tech company that valued salespeople more and that worked out great. No, it didn't. I probably haven't heard about them, but it was like a huge clusterfuck. Anyway, you can tell by asking people, what would the first five staff do? Or what are some products you admire and why? Developing staff. How do you help people grow to the next level and be their best? Your staff are your bedrock. If you don't believe in attracting, retaining, and developing your staff, you're not just going to go very far because frankly, you can't afford perfect people. So um, David Pasiak, who is co-founder and author at Co-Create the Future writes, can you see us working together still in 10 years? Because building a successful company may take that long. And now a very long comment that I thought was worth sharing comes from Syed Muzani, who's co-founder of Foodbits, I think, in Kuala Lumpur. Why bother with a startup? You can get more money working for a salary. You're less likely to lose all your money starting a traditional company. And while we could be millionaires, we're not going to be Bill Gates. This fishes out a lot of the red flags. The worst partner I ever had and the best partner both have said they're in it for the money. Big car, big house, big titles, which is why the question is more than one sentence. The worst partner wanted power. He wants to treat his employees like shit and make himself feel good. The best partner is really in it because he wants to adventure, the path less traveled. This also figures out whether the guy actually has enough money to live on for six months or needs a bit of a salary, or if they're loaded. 
This opens uncom uh, uncomfortable conversations. It also figures out their skills. Someone could say, I could easily get a job with EY or Google, but I'm doing this because. Versus the ones who are like, I can't join the workforce because women are accepted in the construction industry. The most interesting I hear is, I inherit a lot of money from my dad, I just got retrenched, and now I want an active investment. You also want to fish out people um, who just want to put in a few dozen hours or put in some money and then sit by passively. You don't want guys who won't quit their job as co-founder. The answer will let you gauge how well they take responsibility. Some people also get excited at owning a business, but don't sit and consider that they'll be losing money at first with a very significant risk. Some have it as a last shot. They drop out of school, have little savings, can't get a job. This question forces the commitment. And most of all, you want to know that when, not if, things go bad, they will be in it. Those who simply see it as the best offer won't. Those who care insanely about the value proposition won't be very committed. That was a long ass answer. It was pretty good, I think, anyway. Some personal experiences. Okay, guys, your turn. I want you to get out of the comments right now and tell me what you think the best question is to ask a co-founder. And let me know, and I really wanna see what that question is. Now, if you're liking these videos, please can you like, then hit that subscribe, and then click the bell so that you get notified, notifi notified when I put out new content. All right, guys, thanks a lot for spending time with me. Keep hustling.